We're ready to kick off an outstanding afternoon here of soccer. It's gonna be I'm Cameron Markley and I play left forward. We our teams played nine games and I played in eight because I sprained my LCL. It's been pretty frustrating because I have to watch my team play and I can't really do anything to help out, but I'm happy to get back out on the field. Half of the players have been out at some point this season due to injuries. It's been a little bit hard. Uh, some people don't get subs, some people get tired easily or quicker. So we just all are learning our roles as of what we're doing and moving to different spots. Hi, what is your name? Hi, I'm Cassidy Moritz. All right. Uh, when is the canned food drive happening? The food drive will happen from September 30th through October 4th. Okay. Where does the students turn in the canned food? There will be a box located in each school building. Um, the location is yet to be determined, but that will be announced to students and staff once we get closer to the food drive. Okay. How long will this canned food drive go on? It will happen, like I said, from the September 30th through October 4th. There will also be an opportunity to turn in canned food at the Jonathan Alder London football game through the first quarter, and then the total number of canned food will be totaled after that. Uh, what canned food will be accepted? Anything from canned goods like canned vegetable, canned pasta, like Chef Boyardee, ramen noodles, any dry goods that families might enjoy. Okay, can you share a story about how this canned food drive has helped a family in Madison County? So, this is the first year we're doing this food drive, but our hope is to be able to put this food back into the schools and into the community so that way families who might need it and might not otherwise be able to access those food items, um, they're available to them, especially with the loss of sufficient grace this year. Continue going on in the future. This is the first year for the food drive and I'm hoping that we have a great year and that we can continue to do this for many years to come. Good morning. Good morning, Roy. How are you today? Good, how about you? I'm doing well. What's your name and your occupation? Well, my name is Mr. Spees. Who am I with today? Uh, Shane Cahill, Intervention Specialist, London High School. Sometimes I'm called Coach Spees. But Tim Spies is my birth name. Um, I heard you are a new coach at London High School. Yes, yes I am. High school math teacher for London High School. This is my 41st year as a teacher. What is the difference about coaching um, at London versus Plains? Um, I'd say culture. Um, the culture is definitely set. Coach Cutler's been here uh, for a long time building that culture and fighting for that culture. Uh, well, what are your thoughts on this team's potential this season? Well, this team has the same potential as any other London team we've coached. This is my seventh year at London with Coach Cutler. Our goals are always the same. We want to win the league. And uh, our schedule lines up very favorably for us, and I have to believe we are the league favorite. Um, and you can see it every day in the kids and your dedication to the weight room one, first of all, um, and dedication to each other. I mean, just the camaraderie you guys have together and the way you guys push each other daily on the field in the classroom. Just your dedication to the sport and the family aspect. What makes it this year's team different from past teams? Uh, this is our youngest team that we've had since I've been at London. It's actually the youngest team I've had in 30 years. Um, senior class isn't overly big, but the seniors that we have are very talented. They're great leaders. Not just great leaders on the football field, but also in the weight room and in the classroom. As a coach and as a teacher at London High School, what makes a player stand out on the field and in the halls? I'd say the biggest thing in my opinion, um, obviously effort and attitude. Those are two things you can always control. Well, I think the work ethic that uh, Coach Cutler has established with the football program carries over into the hallways in the classroom. Um, but I think bringing younger kids along, especially for the upperclassmen, um, or dedicating themselves to the upperclassmen, that kind of um, shows what kind of a team player you are. So He has a certain set of expectations. Those ex expectations are to be uh, leaders on the field as well as leaders in the classroom. 
Um, obviously, you want to get your stats. You want to win games. Everybody wants to do that. But are you setting the program up for the future um, by teaching and bringing the younger kids along with you? Thank you. I'm Coach Joe Montoya. I'm the head varsity coach for the high school cross country team. How's the team doing this year, and how do you predict they're doing? They're going uh, to do. We've had a great summer of training, and it's definitely showed in our first couple of meets. Um, we've seen a lot of um, all-time personal records, along with um, along with uh, just a lot of hardware being brought home uh, on an individual basis. Question number one, what do you do like for FFA? Okay, so I am the agriculture education teacher and FFA advisor here at Linden High School. Um, I teach several different courses including introduction to agriculture, animal science, food science, ag business, and greenhouse management. Uh, all those courses pertain to food production, um, when we talk about food, fiber, and fuel production in our daily lives. All right. So does FFA stand for anything? Like, is it an acronym? Okay, so FFA used to stand for Future Farmers of America, but in 1988, we made a name change to where it is just, actually just FFA, which is a national leadership organization for youth from grades six through 12. Here at London High School, our program um, consists of students in grades nine through 12. All right, what do you like most about it? Like, what's enjoyable? Um, there's something different every day, um, and I'm doing something different every period. So since I have those six different classes, I'm always teaching something different, uh, different content. Um, and it's anything from animals and livestock to raising the chickens to how we produce our food to how we grow plants. So it's always something different. What types of animals? Uh, so in the animal science class we raise meat chickens and we will raise them up and then we will have that meat pro uh, processed and donated to the help house. That's probably one of my most favorite projects. Um, we also currently have our guinea pigs um, as class pets uh, where students learn a little bit more about small animal care and management. What are some requirements, like if there's any, to join FFA? Okay. So in order to be in the FFA, you have to be enrolled in an agriculture education class. So it's not an extracurricular organization, it's intracurricular. So that means you have to be in the class in order to be part of the youth organization part to be in the FFA. Um, so it's all in one. What are some skills you take away from FFA? Uh, so we do a lot of leadership skills. We do a lot of community service projects. And I like to say that you learn a lot of life skills. So not only do you just learn like typical academics and learn things from a book, we apply them and we definitely are very much hands-on. Uh, so we're definitely a learning to do type of organization in classes. Does it make you more independent since it's like a hands-off learning to do? Yes. So by the time our kids get out of the program, they start as a fre ideally they should start as a freshman and take our courses all the way to the senior year. Uh, by the time they graduate out of here, out of the ag program, um, they are more independent. They are able to hopefully uh, have the work skills and the work ethic that they need to be successful in life. Who would you recommend FFA to? I recommend it to any student that's interested in hands-on learning and learning more about where their food and fuel comes from. What soft skills do you develop? Uh, public speaking, teamwork, um, collaboration, uh, just simply getting along with people that are not necessarily from your same background. Um, like what, was it, what would be a good job for if you're an FFA? Uh, so my students have jobs in all different types of careers. I have students who are typical production that want to go into farming crops and raising livestock to I have students that have worked in vet clinics. I have students that um, are graduates and that are police officers um, that have gone into the military that are in education. So 
really the skills that you learn in, um, in Ag Ed and FFA, you can apply to any career area. Pretty useful. What's your best memory, like teaching at FFA? <laughs> My best teaching memory. Oh goodness, there's been so many. Um, you could give a list. Give a list. Oh my gosh, I'm just trying to think of one that really stands out. Um, I just have to say it's probably just like in general, it's like getting to know students and seeing them grow as individuals, um, especially when they start out as a freshman and when they're quieter and don't want to speak as much until um, when they become like seniors and they're much more outgoing and getting involved in their school.